So we're going to turn to Taiwan for our next tech chat, and I'd like to welcome to the stage, uh, coming up very soon, will be Peter Yun, who's flown in from Taipei for this event. He is the CEO and co-founder of Pincoil, and it's Asia's Etsy, uh, Asia's large online marketplace for unique and original design goods. So uh, Peter, why don't you come up on stage? And we'd like to welcome one of his investors as well, and that is Matt Chang of Cherubic uh, Ventures. So why don't you come up and take a seat? Thank you. Matt and Peter. Okay. And Benjamin, our moderator. You're coming back for an encore. <laughs> I wasn't sure if it was right now right or after. All right, gentlemen. Um, maybe let, let's, let's, nice to see you again. Uh, last time we met in Tokyo, had some uh, delicious food before conference there. And sake. And sake. Don't and sake. sake. That's, was that's true. Uh, it was quite <laughs> delicious too. Um, meanwhile, in China and Hong Kong and Taiwan. Um, so, can you tell us, uh, Peter, more about uh, what you guys have been working on and? Uh, uh, like basically what Pinkoi does. Okay, so I think, it, um, so uh, Pinko, we started Pinkoi uh, three year, uh, around like uh, three years ago, uh, starting from in Taiwan. And what we do is we want to build a community of designers. We think there's many, many talented designers in Asia. And if you look in, in Asia, it's from Japan, uh, the, China, the emerging China, and Hong Kong. Thailand, Taiwan, there's a, a lot of very uh, great designer. And we also, f at three years ago, we also find that this is very, uh, almost impossible to find design from Asia online. So we think, okay, we gotta be, you know, you gotta be someone to help them to really empower designers to drive success to the business and try to bring those kind, kind of good, great design to online and bring the Asian design to the world. So that's what we have been doing, and we have been building a team uh, uh, starting in, tai in Taiwan, and then we have office right now in Tokyo, Hong Kong, Bangkok, and yeah, well, we're looking to expand it uh, to more countries in Asia. Okay. Excellent. Uh, maybe we, Matt can also introduce uh, Cherubic Ventures and tell us more about the operations and uh, the type of investments you, you guys have been doing. Oh, it's a great honor to be here. Um, so Cherubic is a uh, early stage fund focusing global markets, uh, primarily China and US. Uh, we started out in 2010. I, I myself used to be an entrepreneur. I co-founded three companies. Uh, and then really fortunate, uh, one company got m and one company went IPO. And then, you know, uh, right now I dedicate myself to, you know, find, you know, best entrepreneur like Peter, and then try to share my experience. And Terrific, um, we are about 100 million fund. Um, we're across uh, three funds. And then right now we have about 80 portfolios. Uh, about 85% in China and US, and the rest are in Taiwan, Japan, Korea, um, Thailand, and recently Bangladesh. So our thesis is to uh, focus on C stage. Um, so I actually did the math. One, about 15% of the company that I invested is before the registered company. So it's really early. <laughs> um, really focus on talents and then um, try to brainstorm the products, help them to figure out, try and narrow, figure out the right model, and then you know move to our home markets. And um, yeah, so that's what I've been doing. And then we have offices in Beijing, uh, San Francisco, Taipei, uh, a team of six, and then we are expanding to about you know 10 to 12 in the next six months. Okay. Um, so Peter, uh, you guys focus on design and uh, Asi Asian design. Uh, can you tell a bit more specifically what exactly you're talking about? Is it like fashion? Is it like pro what kind of products is it? What kind of verticals uh, did you start with and what do you have now? Okay, uh, so design on Pinko, I think is, is um, it, we, we use design as a big umbrella. So design can be about fashion design, jewelry design, accessory design. I, I mean, it's uh, practically anything that you can wear on your body. You can, you know, clothing, shoes, bag, and anything you can use at home in in your office, I mean, on your table, on your desk. So we we are we are uh, and we only focus on finished product. 
we are not selling we are not selling virtual product or digital print. I mean, everything has to be finished product. They can be shipped directly in package, you know, from you know from Japan to Australia, or from uh, Taiwan to U.S. and Canada. So that's basically you know the rough idea about that. Okay, so that sounds a little bit like a site called Etsy in the U.S. that focused on like hand, handicrafts and like small series kind of maker crafts things. Um, is your site kind of the Asian version of that, or do you see key differences with Etsy? Okay, uh, that, that's a great question. A lot of people compare us to Etsy in the U.S., uh, but uh, I want to share a little bit a difference um, comparing Pinko and Etsy. Um, so we sell and design, we're not only focused on handmade. So we think handmade is a process of producing items. And especially in uh, 20th century or 21st, uh, in 21st century, I mean, the, the, the definition of handmade, you know, it's, it's really, you know, it's really different between, you know, there, there's a lot of gray area around that. I mean, if, if I produce a clothing, I mean, if a clothing designer designs a cloth, how do you, are you defining it as a 100% handmade? But the fabric is actually manufactured from manufacturing. Mm -hmm. So it's really a great, I mean, it really depends on how you define it. The def definition can be very broad or it can be very strict. Okay, but we, we, we think that when we started, we think, you know, uh, handmade is just, a, you know, an expression of how you create your product. Uh, so we use, we sell and design product. We are not only selling handmade and craft. But on Pinko, you will see like, you know, 70% of the product there, you know, you, you can feel this kind of handmade uh, touch on, 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 the, on the product they designed. So that's the first difference. The second one is a curate, we are a curated. We are a curated marketplace. Uh, compared to other, other platform in, you know, outside of Asia, they are open platform. Open platform, that means, I mean, us, everyone can list on those kind of marketplace. And on Pinko, the, you know, if you want to list on Pinkoi, you need to you know, uh, go through a very careful um, curation process. The selection rate, uh, adoption, uh, admission rate for Pinkoi is only 10%. So out of 100 designers, we only select 10. So does that mean that, let's say, like I'm making beautiful necklaces using painted noodles. I cannot go to your platform just by applying on it? You, you, how would you tell me if it actually is okay? For me to be there. You, I mean, everyone can apply, but I mean, we have uh, some of the internal process, some criteria we define uh, to decide whether uh, we want to open permission to you or I mean, for you to list on Pinkway. And does that mean that you need to have like a minimum volume that people can produce, or it, like what what kind of criteria do you have? No, uh, we don't put any criteria on the volume that, that you produce. Especially for Japan, a lot of a lot of Japanese designer they only produce very very few items. Maybe okay if they design um, a vest, only ten. They only they they, they only want to create ten pieces in their lifetime, mm -hmm. and they stop doing it. Okay, so we don't really limit on the volume, but we the first criteria we limit it is the origin. You have to be original design. Mm -hmm. The design has to be coming from you or your team, and this is. Your idea, not you know, not copy from others, not you know, try to mimic from others. So that was the top criteria that you select on the product. That seems to be kind of a tough one because so I'm based in China. In China, there's Taobao. On Taobao, there's everything and a hundred copies of the same thing. So how they have a hard time filtering? How do you guys do? Okay, so that's that. I mean, so we filter into the cre uh, curation process. I mean. Uh, we use a, a different kind of technology to kind of identify based on the image. Mm -hmm. You know, we can do a lot of image matching uh, on product that this is on other platform. Mm -hmm. you know, for example, the Taobao, mm -hmm. you know, eBay, and we try to you know figure that out to whether I mean, what what's the percentage of the originality of the product? Okay, and if we feel any questions on the product, we call we call the designer, we ask them to send a sample, and we have a curation team to actually you know uh, kind of. Uh, have different people coming from different backgrounds and they know, they understand how, how each item they are produced. Okay, so Matt, uh, to uh, turn to you now, like this, this pro startup seems to have pretty labor intensive process and you guys come in really early, like how early did you invest in this company? I think when, 
four years ago when Peter returned from the U.S. and then found his co-founders. <laughs> Okay. And I saw a small copy shop. <laughs> had they already launched the service? They launched. Uh, they have a very simple website, and then I actually found that. Also, I can tell you that there's so many story I can share with you. Um, because, um, you know, I've seen Peter had growing from, you know, an entrepreneur to a, I think, um, a thought leader and also um, a peer leader on the sectors, and then, so this is how I found Pinkoi. Um, so I'm an early adopter to Facebook, and I was just. I like to browsing everything. And then someday my friend liked a page, which is a Pinkoi's Facebook page. I was like, oh my god, because I'm a big fan of lifestyle goods. Ooh. And then, I mean, the, the part that they presented is like really, really nice, really neat. And then I had never seen any product like that. And then so I came my friend right away. Mm. And I was like, hey, who was this company? And then, so it happened to be uh, Peter's friend who is helping him to, I think, marketing. Right, and that person actually now become my team member. <laughs> but um, yeah, so this is how I found Pinkoi, and um, and then and then, you know, first thing I saw that I I met my friend, and then I said I have to meet this guy, and then um, so I met him, and then he's just himself, um, and we were sitting in the coffee shop, and you know we were just talking about random things, and then Peter told me about his vision, uh, and you know really the the minute that make me decided to, I think this is the right guy to do this is, you know, uh, when, he, when Peter was in uh, Yahoo US, mm -hmm. you know, he, um, he goes to uh, farmer's market, you know, just to look for, you know, like product, uh, you know, like uh, a lot, of, not only farmers, uh, no, not just <laughs> farmer's market, crafting market, and then he's like so passionate about the products, and then, so we're just talking about, oh, the model, you know, this is the early, early stage, but you know, starting from the day one, he has this really strong mission to help designer to sell the product to the global. Mm. And then, you know, and so I, so we were just talking about, you know, the product and everything. It was like, uh, I, I just want to help these designer. And then, you know, he was carrying this messenger, like visiting all the designers he can find. Mm. And just to understand their pinpoints. And, you know, that passion just moved me. And then, this is the right guy. Yeah, so that's how I, you know, pull the trigger. Okay, to play a little bit devil's advocate here is that <laughs> every single entrepreneur you would meet is very passionate about what he's doing, right? Uh, so no, I mean, not necessary. Uh, well, so, a lot of people are passionate, mm. but a lot of people are passionate. Um, so you know, after a few, I mean, during a conversation, you kind of you can kind of feel uh, he's passionate because that business makes sense, oh. or he's passionate because he really loved that business. Mm. It's very different. Okay, so um, turning again to uh, to you, Peter, about uh, about the business uh, business aspect. So, can you tell us more about your current business results, number of users, how much business you actually you know already managing through your platform, like some uh, something that give us an idea of the scale that you already have. Okay, so let's start from the design community. So currently, we have uh, twenty five uh, thousand indie designers uh, selling on Pinkoys. Uh, they are from uh, mo most, uh, I mean, majority of them, they are from Asia. I mean, there are some from Japan, Hong Kong, China, uh, Taipei, and Bangkok, Australia, and, and there are some from UK and uh, North America. So, uh, so um, that's the design community. And uh, currently, we have about like every month, we have two million of visitors to our websites, uh, and we are we have sold our product to uh, sixty three country uh, around. I mean, Globally, mm -hmm. so last year it was only 37. So this year we launched English website, we launched Thai website, we launched. We also built a team in Japan. So this year, I mean, we helped the empowered designer to sell their product to 63 country worldwide. Okay, can you give us an idea of like the the scale of the turnover you you're having through your platform? Is it like above 10 million US, above 100 million US of products sold like last year? And if you can share those numbers. Uh, I'm, afraid, I'm afraid, I mean, that would be, you know, still... Too much information. Yeah, too much information. That's okay. Um, another question is, like, so you seem to have really interesting results already. Um, now, how do you manage to get growth? Um, because to get to the next stage, you need, you know, to grow to maybe more markets, more users. Like, I didn't know so much about Pinkoi. Uh, Pinkoi, sorry. Um, I didn't buy anything yet. Uh, so... I'll give you a gift card. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Appreciate that. Yeah, got something out of this. Um, so, 
what, how, like, how do you acquire more users? Do you get a lot of word of mouth? Do you advertise? Do you do like pop-up events? Uh, yeah. Like, what do you do? Okay, great. Uh, very good question. Uh, I think um, the business we are building on Pinkoi is really about people business. So at the very first, um, uh, I, I think in two years and three years also, we are at the very scrappy mode. Uh, so a lot of uh, most of the growth is from social channels. Uh, they are organic growth. We didn't really spend any advertising dollar on that. So the 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 early stage growth is really organic. And I mean, I think word of mouth still is the key uh, drive, you know, the key driver for our growth. So aside from that, I mean, uh, when, after we got you know support from you know um, investors um, and also um, all the team, so we start. Uh, to doing a lot of different, you know, to, to acquire users in different channels. Uh, yeah, we do, we definitely do some pay advertising, mm. but we're still very focused on, you know, the organic growth. Because I, I think it's the beauty of community. Once you have more, you know, we, and we also, we are also curated uh, community. So for great designer from Japan, once they join Pinkoi, a lot of designers, they haven't joined Pinkoi, they will see, hey, this guy is already on Pinkoi. Mm. I want to be part of them. So I mean, once you build build a quality community, it become a, a very good m magnet to attract those positive forces outside from your community. So they ha they help us grow a lot. Mm. Okay, so Matt, you were you the first investors in Pincoin? You were. Yeah. So typically, a startup journey goes through a few near death experiences on the trajectory. Did that happen? Were you around? What did you do? Can you tell about us? Well, I think, um, well, of course, I think every venture has up, up and down. Um, and, but, you know, I, I think what I've been telling Peter is that, you know, everybody talk about content is king. And in our platform, our content is a designer. And this is where his mission and passion. I, I, think, I think Zuckerberg just uh, recently mentioned that, you know, a good business, you have to have a mission. Mm -hmm. And I think Peter is the best example of that. Mm -hmm. He's starting. He, he, I think he moved back wants to help the Asian. Uh, mm. He started from Taiwan, of mm. course, but he wants to help the designer to sell to global. And you know that vision really leads him to focus on the right product mm. because you don't have to think about what's the product roadmap. All you think is oh, what's the problem that designer is facing. And mm. he actually got piles of you know like you know requests. And then his challenge is really how to prioritize you know mm. which feature to develop first. So. Yeah, that's it. I'll restate my question. Um, <laughs> so, because <laughs> you dodged it. Um, so okay. the question um, is actually, in the investment community, yeah. it's quite rare for people to write the first check and lead around. Uh, so it's already like credit to you for doing that, because most people don't want to do that, because uh, there's some work to do to do due diligence, even at early stage. Uh, but then as a lead, uh, very often, you actually, you're the you know, last resort when there's a problem. Like people call you when things are really in trouble. So did that happen? And what did you do? Maybe you had just a, like, an easy cruise and there was no problem. So for, well, well he, of course, he asked me a lot of um, questions. But so far, there's no like uh, really serious. It's always like, oh, you know, uh, we actually you know, we tried this, we tried that, and then you know, there's the other way. Mm. And then, um, and then, you know, like, us like capital market, how do we, how do we pick the right investor and so that. So uh, you never went to like any critical situation so far? Well, I, I can share Maybe one Maybe you have a different story. point yeah, of view. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think every time I call up Matt, uh, I think I can give you a, a, a one example. When we started to uh, do business in China, because we got a lot of traction for, for user um, from China to buy from Pinkoi. Um, the first thing I asked him was, hey, how do I send money to China? <laughs> there was a very, you know, I, I think, I, I believe, I mean, for most professionals here, this is an easy question. But for this kind, uh, for me, like, you know, the really green entrepreneur, it was a very hard question. So because, I mean, there's no other, we want to try the legal, well, what, what would be the right way to send money to China and to grow our business in China? So I think, I was calling him saying, if you don't, you know, can you help me? If you don't help, I mean, we're gonna screw in China. <laughs> and and, and, and we, we cannot pay our uh, vendors in China as well, uh, a lot of things. So um, yeah, we do have a lot of challenges, but it's not really close to death. 
<laughs> it's really about, you know, like... You, know, you don't have to, you know, it's, you it's know. okay. Uh, <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's better that way. All right, uh, so maybe uh, just as a wrap up before we turn to the audience for, for a couple of questions, what, what's the plan for next year? Uh, we just recently launched an you know, English uh, website uh, along with our recent investment from Sequoia. Uh, so the next year would be will be focused more on international uh, expansion, especially for English-speaking country. So uh, right now, our we believe that I mean there's a lot of improvement that we can do to please the English uh, visitor and customers. So we'll work very hard to to achieve that. Uh, because I mean, U.S. and Canada is our third market right now. So people can come to you after the the talk to get a, a coupon and get 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 started with a uh, with Pinkoin. I'll send it out. <laughs> <laughs> All right, cool. Okay, thank you. Thanks.